Hello you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this video finds you well and still enjoying the hobby. So the subject of this series is what you see in front of you with the beautiful box art and the color, nice color call outs on the side. It is the Zvezda 1144 scale Boeing 757-200 series. Um, this is filling a long uh, awaited gap in the civil airliner market and I purchased it because it's my favorite civil aircraft or civil airliner should we say. Uh, they do their usual most annoying thing which is a side opening box but we have to live with that. I suppose the uh, box insert opens up nicely so uh, we'll give them half credit points for that one. So as you can see nothing too exciting here it's just a box full of plastic um, and some decals, a stand and also a planned view of the aircraft showing the colours that you will need should you decide to use the excellent decals that are here in front of you for Iceland Air Colours. So as you can see it's all plainly laid out uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to uh, A build this aircraft and B make it look half presentable hence why I'm doing it. As you can see you get a nice little stand if that sort of thing floats your boat it's not my cup of tea but uh, it's there if you so desire. Bag of decals and the clear plastic and I will say as I point out later on the, um, the clear parts are really really excellent. So here we go box of sprues few bits and pieces and that pretty much is your review of the box. No messing around here. So I thought I'd show you a little bit of a close up of the really nice fine detail that Zvezda have included in this kit and overall I really do rate this kit, it is really excellent. They've done a good job as Zvezda always do and they're really starting to corner the market now in my opinion for airliners because I'm a civvy boy uh, outside of model making I photograph, mod uh, photograph airliners I've always been a civvy boy um, but obviously I like to, as you see in the other series I do like to build military aircraft as well so as you can see there as I previously mentioned the actual detail and the clear parts are nothing short of excellent they're really really good it was a shame to cover them up but uh, on this build I just wanted to do it nice and easy I didn't want to paint the cockpit and bits like that I just wanted to go and just sort of do it easy I mean how wrong was I it's taken me nearly six months to get the mojo and do this but uh, it is what it is so the instructions are in black and white and they're really simple uh, look at that it's pretty much the whole building in one A4 sheet what well, in one A3 sheet so uh, you can't really go wrong it, it's not a hard it's not a difficult build and it all fits together as Vesda do um, really really beautifully and there you can see the two different engine variants that you can build so be, please be careful when you're choosing which livery or aircraft to represent that you actually build the right engines because the fan blades and the length of the cowlings etc are different as, I, as you can clearly see here so you've got, that, you've, got one, you've got at least two sets of different engines there um, I say at least, no, you've got two sets of different engines there and you've got the different fan blades uh, for the different engines so as I say please do your, your homework on that one so that's straight into the build really, no messing about from me I hope you like the black gloves, <laughs> not too menacing I hope it's just a case of putting those two halves together, sanding and filling them uh, so that they look uh, spherical and don't have the seam line and using my trusty Mr Hobby number 8 silver so for this aircraft it's going to be in United Airlines uh, and they use a certain type of engine which I haven't done my homework for I think it's um, Rolls Royce off the top of my head so uh, I, I've picked the appropriate fan blades for that and we get straight down to spraying them silver and we'll sort of give them a bit of a weather up etc just to make them not look so clean so to speak although they are pretty clean obviously in real life there we go and as you can see Svesta really done quite a nice detail job with that there's even the uh, screw marks on the uh, center uh, part of the uh, the cones of the uh, engines and then it's a case of painting the leading edge of the engine the cells uh, silver again and then it's just a case of double siding the tape and sticking them onto an old sanding stick and, and, and painting them up uh, spraying them up as you can see I sped this up so I don't bore you to tears So next up it's time to fill the windows because the scheme that I'm going to be doing 
it's it's just going to be way too complicated to have the windows not filled and then have to yeah cut it all out and, and it's just a, a, a ball ache I don't need so my the, the only sort of system I found so far that you don't have much shrinkage is using millipart and it's a two-part epoxy as you can see clearly demonstrated in front of you it's a case of nipping a bit of that off and mixing it together like so and then we will go on to fill in the window. So give it a good kneading and just get those two parts together. And I didn't wear gloves for this part because as you can see, it sticks really well to everything. So I would have just been pulling my gloves apart. So the system I do, uh, again, as you can see, is I will roll them, roll the milliput into a long thin tube or two long thin tubes. And then we'll uh, work our way along through the windows, pushing it through. You don't need to put anything on the paper here, it's not that sticky. It's just a case of uh, kneading it out, like you say, making two thin lines. You don't need to go crazy with the amounts that you have. And then using, obviously from the inside of the fuselage, filling uh, those windows with this milliput. It's a really simple process. And like I say, this is the best process that I've found to, to date for, uh, for not shrinking. So it keeps the, the, the fuselage cylindrical, say that when you've had a few. Um, uh, and it, there is a slight, there can be a slight recess when you, after you've sanded it. But I tend to find that shows like where the windows would actually recess in real life, if you know what I mean. It, you can see the sort of outline. So I think it, it's, it's a nice balance of real, realism with it. So it's a case of push it through so you, you, they squid out like that and allowing it to, to dry. And I work my way along the fuselage. It's a little time consuming, but uh, the uh, rewards at the end are, are, are really worth it. And it's quite fun squidging them through the windows as well. And then of course, as my, my hands are demonstrating, I uh, do both sides of that, but I did that off camera. Okay, next up is the cockpit. Uh, as I was previously said, I, I'm not gonna go down the route of painting it and keeping the glass clear. You can, if you want, uh, each to their own. It, it just, I wanted to try and keep this build a little bit light. This is more of a bit of a palette cleanser, which it has been, if only I could have found the mojo to just do, bashed it out in a couple of weeks, but I didn't, but that was not down to the, the quality of the kit or anything like that. So using the trusty Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, as we can see there, it's just a case of, uh, Construct, putting the seats in place and the uh, control yokes as well. I'd imagine this will look quite smart if you paint the cockpit and keep the uh, clear plastic parts there. I should imagine it look quite realistic and, and nice. Like I say, I just couldn't honestly be asked to do it. I kept the windows. Uh, you'll see later on I um, used decals for the windows. So just speeding this up for your viewer enjoyment. And whilst I'm doing this, in front of you. Um, yes, apologies for the lateness with this video, or well, the length of time it's taken to um, get another video out. I appreciate all the support that's been uh, fired my way, making sure I'm okay, I'm fine. I've just been really busy with work, and by really busy, I've started a new job, still in aviation, um, and I've just put my soul into it, so I've just been a bit busy, and then when I've got home, I'll be, I've had other things to do. But there we go, I digress. You don't need to know my personal life. Um, there's a one copy. There you go, simple as that. Then back to the engine intakes. These have been filled and sanded as best as I, um, I could do, really. And it was a little, it was a case of a mixture of uh, Mr. Color One and Tamiya XF57, just because it's kind of like a silvery beige color. And if you do your research, you'll see that they're not silver. They are this kind of color. So. Uh, I've, I've done my sort of best to represent the, the, the realistic uh, colour with this. Next up it's building the wings and they're just again a really simple three piece construction. Your two top parts and your bottom bit. And the interesting bit of the bottom part of the wing as you can see there forms part of the fuselage. Now there are pros and cons with this. I don't know if I like it or not because it's a bit of a pain because it, sometimes it doesn't quite line up right. Whereas I would have preferred just like kind of like what Ravel do, where you have the, the recessed slot to slide the wings into. I would have preferred that, but you know, this is what's been presented to me, so you've got to play with what's in front of you, really. 
Um, I'm using Revell normal standard glue for this part because it's just easier and you'll notice that I've not got the needle on it and that's just to make it so I can splurge out the glue <laughs> technical term there um, easier and it's just a case as you can see put the glue on the insides being careful not to overdo it so it doesn't um, f sort of uh, squirt out the sides and it really is as simple as what you've seen in front of you again a lot of company manufacturers are going for this so if you can see on the right hand side of the wing there near where my thumb is now they kind of have this obsession with why why have the bottom wing a different length than the top wing just make them the same length because i've got to fill that later on and it looks crap so this was one of the few complaints i have with this kit is that the Vesta have done this and it, it's not the first time they've done it and i wish they'd stop it because there's no line there on the actual aircraft so i can't figure out why they've done that but uh, again, it's the only kit that's out there at the moment, and it's very accurate. So uh, you got to make what you got, makes the best you can with what you've got. So once the two wings are, are glued it together, I did actually use, the, as you can see, the Tamiya some uh, th extra thin to do the leading edge because this will allow the glue to seep out the front, go hard, and then I can sand it, and you don't have a seam line. And there you go, goes together nice and easy, like so. As I say, I don't have too many um, complaints with this kit at all. However, that bit on the wing really did annoy me. And also the way the winglets are put in on the side, which you'll see in due course, they're really, 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 really fragile. So it's something to bear in mind uh, when you're building this kit. So just working my way along the, the leading edge, like so. Making sure the lid's done up on the Tamiya extra thin because you don't want to spill it because I've been there, done that, and it sucks. So as you can see now, the uh, putty has gone hard, or semi-hard, uh, because once it goes hard, trust me, you cannot cut it easily like this. So I let it go sort of semi-hard, just lob the, uh, the tips off so there's not so much to sand. Be careful though to make sure that, there, that there's no sort of gaps around the edges of the windows because otherwise that completely defeats the object of the exercise. So just take your time, bit of care involved here. Because like I say, once it goes hard, it is a pain in the ass to then do this with. But this bit here will just save you so much sanding time, you have no idea. So, I've done my sanding, as you can see, and to stop losing the detail around the sides, I used Tamiya's excellent uh, tape, uh, masking tape, to just mask as close as I could to the windows to save losing any seam lines. And there's what it looks like on the inside. Nothing glamorous, but obviously no one's gonna see that side of things. And then I used the tape around the side, as, as I say, just to stop me losing any uh, detail in the fuselage. And then it's just a simple case like when you're painting of just removing the tape methodically, making sure you don't leave any bits left behind. Forgive me if what I'm describing is a little bit simple to some of the more professional guys that may be listening in. I've tried to do this at an entry level to give people, um, like to encourage new people to have a go at this side of things. And I just thought I'd explain even sort of the more mundane things to, um, to make it clearer for anyone that doesn't know. Okay, with that done, it was a case of uh, painting the wheel wells in the usual sort of yellowy brown colour that the um, that, that sort of generation of Boeing aircraft had. As you can see, that was the nose wheel and these are the uh, main gear doors as well. And it's a case of obviously masking that up when you uh, paint the wings. And that was again using Tamiya XF57 Buff. Again, it's open to interpretation this side of things. So do your research, check what colour you're happy with for your particular aircraft. So next up was the landing gear. And again, what's worth noting is with the wheels, you're giving two different sets of uh, wheels. 
and I'll go back to that in a second. This was done again using the wheel well um, for XF57 and 308 for the actual landing gear colours. So yes, you're given two different sets of wheels. So uh, do your due diligence beforehand just to make sure that you use the correct uh, wheel rims or uh, wheels for your particular aircraft that you choose. And it's just a case of going through with the grey and colouring in the centre portions, uh, colouring in, will you listen to me, uh, spraying the centre parts of the wheels and of course just doing the main frames for the undercarriage and uh, ancillary parts. So as you can see, copy is done, nice and dry now. I haven't bothered painting it, no need. And uh, worthy of note is the actual under, the main nose gear bay is attached to the cockpit. And you can see the pin marks there are quite clearly marked and the cockpit just clips into place. Again with Zvezda it is the usual excellent fit like so. It's a little bit fiddly. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly for me because I was trying to show you guys on using the camera but if you're not doing something in front of a camera which probably a lot of you aren't it's actually really simple and then it's just a case of using the Tamir extra thin cement and working it around and allowing the capillary action to glue as you can see here. And for those that don't know the capillary reaction is where you just dab a little bit of glue and it runs along the line of contact and uh, Tamir extra thin cement is really really excellent for this. Okay, the cockpit is in place and now it's time to glue the two fuselage halves together. So we're making good progress already with the, uh, with the build. And it really is a simple build. Um, and what you see in front here is me again using the previously mentioned capillary action. So I sort of split the halves. I'm going to let sort of maybe the video do more of the, the description here. It's okay to split the halves and just run the glue down, let the capillary action do its thing. And what you kind of want is, to, is when you put the two halves together, you want a beading effect with the glue to, to sort of pop. There you go. You can just see it on the front there, um, the beading effect where the glue squidges up. Now give it a good 12 hours to dry. And then when you sand that, you don't have to fill any sort of recesses or gaps because the glue's filled it and popped out the top. And you get a lovely seamless finish then. Just in case, working up the fuselage, it doesn't matter really which end you start at. I prefer to do the cockpit first and then just work backwards, well, upwards, depending on which way you look at it. So as you can see there, the fuselage uh, halves are now together. And we've got no seam line, which is lovely. And that was just a case of allowing, as I say, the Tamir Extra Thin Cement to dry and then sanding that seam line. And again, you will see I've got the uh, Tamir masking tape there. And again, this is because when I'm sanding, I don't want to lose too much detail. It reduces the, you know, it reduces the damage that you can cause to, or the detail loss that you can cause. So I thought I'd just briefly touch on the sanding sticks and my technique for getting rid of that. I use quite a coarse sanding stick to start with, very gently, don't put much pressure in, allow the sanding stick to do all the work, okay, and then progressively work to a smoother grade or, 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 or grit, okay, and it was just a case of working in one direction, as you can see here with the harder, the, the more coarser stick, and just work in opposite directions back again, and you will find that that really takes the hard work out of the sanding. One thing I cannot stress enough is don't wiggle it around in circles. You want straight lines because then it's a lot easier to smooth out and make almost like a glass effect as you could see earlier on. Because that glass smooth effect is what we're after. Then as before, just removing the masking tape. We haven't lost much detail there. Look, you can see the. Uh, the cargo door, the baggage uh, door there has not been touched at all, whereas if I hadn't had the tape there, it might have been scuffed by the sanding sticks. That little knobbly bit, for want of a better phrase you can see, doesn't actually show up at all. It's actually just in the plastic. So that's all removed 
and we're, we've got our fuselage half together and we're looking pretty good. So now it's time to make sure that all the um, panel lines, because they're not rivets, uh, rivet lines, the panel lines are still there. So for that I use a dentist toothpick and I haven't done it, I've been a bit lazy in this video so kind of don't do what I'm doing here. Um, I just uh, gently run it along the lines because I didn't lose much detail anyway so I'm kind of just emphasizing the small amount that I've lost but it is really and I cannot stress it enough so easy for that toothpick to slip and then you've got to sand it again so if you're new to this don't have the experience um, what I tend to mostly do and I haven't done it here and I don't know why is I get electrical tape and I just run that round where the line should be and then it's like a guide for where I'm scribing so next up, moving very swiftly along, it's the case of gluing the uh, cockpit glass into the fuselage and again using Tamiya Extra Thin. Now if I was going to keep this clear, I would probably have used CA glue to do this because you can get fogging with the Tamiya cement, so that's just worthy of note, okay. But as you can see, it was a bit of a shame because you can see really well into that cockpit. So I think if I do this kit again, which I probably will because I've got lots of airliners I want to do, uh, lots of 757s I want to do because it is my favourite airliner, I, will, I might go down the route of doing the clear cockpit so you can see inside. So to the best of your ability, just make sure that it's all clicked into place and that you're happy with that. So now it's time for primer. As you can see, we have the two main protagonists here in front of us, the main wing section and the fuselage. I mix my primer 1500 with Mr. Hobby uh, self-leveling thinners. The combo of those two is just excellent. I would strongly, strongly advise you to wear um, breathing apparatus or a face mask for this because my God, this stuff hums. It really, really does kick up. Uh, I've got a little sort of workbench in the corner um, of, of my house and it sort of attaches onto ways well, walkthroughs into the living room so I have to do this quite late at night otherwise my wife kicks off something horrible about it and to be honest with you I can't even argue because the stuff really does stink so I thought I'd sort of speed this process up for you because uh, you don't want to spend 20 minutes watching me uh, paint this but it's just a case of misting it on and allowing uh, not over uh, applying it, although it is extremely forgiving this stuff, uh, but just taking your time. And also what is great about this is uh, the primer will reveal any sort of uh, minor imperfections or big imperfections if you're unlucky with your work. So here's a good time once you've done your primering to sort of assess where you're at and see if anything else needs to be done at that point. So we're checking over, like I say, to make sure that there's no uh, imperfections, etc, etc. And then it's on to painting what most airliners are, and that is a plain boring white. So that's Mr. Hobby number one, gloss white. Again, thinned with Mr. Hobby self-leveling thinners. I tend to give the, uh, the primer about 12 hours to gas out and make sure all's okay. Check for any imperfections, correct any imperfections, and then it's a case of just lightly dusting the uh, the gloss white, taking your time, and I thin it quite thin as well, uh, and have it on a lowish pressure, just so I can get that sort of gloss, dense uh, uh, look to it, and it's just a case of building up the layers. If you don't rush this bit and get it right, it will save you lots of uh, heartache in the future. So just take your time layer it up don't put uh, too much in one spot because then you'll get runs and that is a whole world of hurt that you really really don't want as you can see there i'm just using a clamp to hold the tail uh, just so it makes it easier to maneuver the fuselage so moving fast forward that was all done very happy with that it's a case of then masking the whole all the white bits and believe me do do that because this <laughs> the gray that i'm about to use or any other color trust me if you've just left a tiny bit off it will find that bit and you'll get a, a gray mark on your white so mr hobby 308 is the weapon of choice for this one and the eagle eyed of you will notice that all of a sudden the belly of this is gray 
And that is because I had to uh, wipe away the grey that I used before this that you can see on that wing above. And now we're a Mr. Hobby uh, colour 97. So go with 97. I'm just making this up as I go along. I, 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 honestly, it's, yeah, I am a nightmare. So disregard the previous bits. Mr. Hobby 97 was the grey for the Continental. But again, do your own research. Um, but I'm just showing there, basically. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. So I had to correct those errors. Okay. And it was just a case of then reapplying this grey and then going over to the bottom of the fuselage and applying the grey to that. So I had to uh, wipe away the old grey because it wasn't the correct colour and I basically used uh, the Mr Hobby thinners for that and it did a great job. Remask it up and then paint the right colour. Okay so apologies for that mistake there but you know a lot of you know people that put their YouTube videos just to show the perfections of everything. Oh I got this right first time. Yeah did you though? I mean I guess a lot of people do but um, I just wanted to show that I'm human. I do make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. You can correct them like I have here and move forwards because if you're like me and if I hadn't have corrected that mistake I'd keep looking at it thinking the grey ain't right on that and it would have just eaten me up. So it's just a case of again lightly applying the grey and as you can see I'm a, kind of applying it away and a, a, sort of a I don't know how do I describe this a 45 degree angle away from the tape because I find that helps not create a lip when you pull the, the uh, masking tape away. So whilst you're watching me do this uh, I've sped this up a bit just for your viewing pleasure and uh, yeah, it's just a case of working my way through. It turns out I haven't sped this up. I'm talking complete nonsense anyway. But whilst we're going through with this bit, um, it, I just want to thank you all for liking and subscribing. I think I'm up now to 825 subscribers, which I, I just can't get my head around that, that there's 825 people in this world that want to listen to my ramblings. Anyway, I am truly grateful. If you haven't already and you've liked what you've seen here, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell because then you'll get notifications from when I release videos, which in the last six months hasn't been at all. But uh, I, I do tr I aim to uh, get back on the... Uh, on the horse so to speak and get this uh get more videos out there will be a part two to this where we cover decals uh, and all the other bits i don't know if there'll be a part three yet because I, i'm trying to keep the videos to half an hour because I, I i was going to try and get it all in one video but i thought an hour of that is going to be killer so i'm going to try and sort of break it up into bite-sized pieces um, so the next video will be covering decals uh, engines uh, I'm trying to think what else I did and, and, and other bits and pieces uh, to get the aircraft nearly to the end. There might be a third where it's kind of uh, finishing off bits and pieces and doing a review of it. I'm not sure yet. I haven't kind of uh, got to that point yet. So here we are. It's just a case of finishing off the grey. Nice gloss finish there. Happy with that. Just making sure we cover both sides. And also there's something to watch out for. Bits of tape can, can come off like that. Just take your time, get it right. Be careful where you put your hands because you don't want to get splodge marks in that. And as you can see here, I'm just not happy with where that bit, uh, a bit of tape went. And I think there's also a bit of hair in there. So I've included this in the video just to say stop a second. If you're not happy, it's totally okay to just wait, take your time, because you'll thank yourself later on in the process. And just carrying on with the grey there. I apologise that this bit's gone on a little bit too long. That's a bit of an error on my side with the editing. But as I say, it does show various stages and, and just taking your time. And like, if you're not happy with something, removing a bit of uh, dust or, or, or whatever. So, we have... Everything all done there, the grey looking nice, very happy with that. It's time to do what I just love doing and that is removing the masking tape. And this time I actually have sped it up, so uh, no errors in my editing there, so that's good. And it's just a case of get rid of all the masking tape, be careful, take your time with this, uh, don't just yank it off. Just take your time, peel it away, and hopefully you'll get a nice result at the end. 
It's, it's one of those weird two sort of double-edged sword things. It's either you peel it away and you're absolutely delighted, or you peel it away and go, ah, crap, this looks horrible, and you have to start again. But uh, on this occasion, it is just a case of it looks good, so we're happy with that. Clearing of the bits off the wings as well, and then just sort of marrying them up to make sure that they're the same colour. Now, I, I'm pretty sure in this video, it doesn't look like they do match up, and that's just an error with the camera with that, because believe you me, they, it matches up perfectly um, in, in real life. And the thumbs up, because we're happy. Okay, so now it's time to do the leading edges, which are chrome. So, uh, with the chrome, I, um, we've got a sort of a two-tone chrome here, so I've left one bit without the black and one bit with the black uh, base coat to it. Uh, mask it up thoroughly, and then it's a case of using the Alclad or whatever chrome suits you, but I've used the Alclad 2 chrome there. Um, it's good stuff most of the time, uh, and it sticks well. So it's just a, a real simple case here, masking it all up, making sure it, it, it can't go anywhere uh, where you don't want it to, and then just applying in light coats like so. And again, sped up for viewer comfort. I am good to you lot, aren't I? <laughs> so we've got less than a minute to go, so I'd like to thank you all very, very much from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me through the, the non-video section uh, of the last six months. Uh, the next video should be out within the month, so uh, in fact, I want to get it out in the next couple of weeks. So uh, thank you for bearing with me. Thank you so much for all your encouraging words over the time that I've not been here. Um, Thank you for hitting the like and subscribe. All I can say to you is, uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate it. Okay, that's the chrome done. I didn't sort of bore you with all of the uh, demasking of it. And as you can see there, you've got the two different uh, chrome sections, which the 757 has. So with 10 seconds to go, thanks for everything. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you the next time, whenever that may be. Hopefully not too long with part two of this video. Bye-bye for now.